I'm fairly new to this. Um, so there's going to be a lot of uh, disconnect in the syncing steps, if you would. A um, few more disclaimers here. Um, again, I'm not going to match up to anybody who does this on a regular basis, the professionals. Um, thank you for your contribution. Um, for the ones who are consuming, good luck running. Pastor Uncle's looking for you. So that's a disclaimer. Um, beyond that, uh, worship team, if you see me stand still here, that's your cue for a rescue mission. Um, I don't know where you are, but you need to step up and then advance the church to more worship. Hopefully that's not going to be the case, but I just wanted to get some disclaimers out of the way uh, because this is new to me. Um, so uh, I think it's Pete that's helping me with the PowerPoint. So um, before he brings in the first slide, um, I just want to go ahead and um, the whole topic today, it's based on my thoughts, um, on my personal observation and uh, just reflection of how um, everything's kind of intertwined. Um, so, Pete, you can go ahead and help me with the first slide, please. Okay, so resilience is the word that I chose. Um, I did a little bit of an attempt to see if I can find the Malayalam equivalent word, and it came up as unmesham, if I pronounce that right. I don't know if it's a literal word for resilience or not, but regardless, it says ability to recover from, recover from or adjust um, or forward motion despite the absence of courage, comfort, and clarity, right? Um, so to give you a little context, um, uh, if we were to look at the, the past two years, I'm sure we can, um, you know, have many words and different ways of um, describing that, right? Um, but this is a word that kind of resonates with me, and I'm sure we've all shown that resilience in terms of um, getting ahead of this pandemic, if you would, right? Um, so for, uh, for our purposes today, I tried you know, attaching that word um, to scriptural evidence as to what that says, right? So slide two, please, Pete. All right, so you have your standard James 1, verse 2 to 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Uh, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So you have one of that on the contrast, James, and then you have the book of Job, and we know Job and his resilience, how he withstood the trials and God honored him. Uh, but I'm going to focus more on the, the, the James 1 verse 2 to 4 here. Um, so uh, let's see. I, I'm not here to discuss anything that you guys already don't know, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and use um, the, the pandemic as, a, as an excuse to dive in and to kind of you know, unpack that a little bit. So we're in 2021, 2020 is behind us, um, and I'm gonna use the, the year 2020 as a baseline. Um, and uh, I'm gonna see if I can go ahead and communicate the dot in terms of resilience. Um, you know, when 2020 hit, especially with this pandemic, um, you know, we, re we had to replace our doubts about what COVID-19 was um, to, um, to practical things, right? We had to start taking our action steps based on whether it was whether if it was CDC or whether if it was a workplace, church, whatever, right? We had to take some action steps. Um, it was beyond a thought. So when you started thinking of COVID-19, you started thinking of the natural steps that you had to take um, to withstand that, right? So um, next, uh, Pete, can you jump to the next slide, please? So here's where um, you know if you had to narrow it down, you know we we retired our old ways of doing things, right? Um, we put everything we put everything through the lens of COVID-19. Like, is this is this COVID-19 safe? About what we're about to do? Can we go to the grocery store like we used to? So we retired our old ways of doing things. You know, before we used to jump out of our car without mask, no problem whatsoever. But now we often catch ourselves in the grocery store right at the entrance. Oh, I forgot my uh, mask. Let me run to my um, car. So those were some of those things that we had put away. Um, we replaced it, again, we replaced it with uh, the old ways of doing things with masks, hand sanitizers, um, you know, face shields, um, staying away from public settings, right? So we replaced the old ways uh, through this. Um, and in, in all reality, the third step was we're doing repetition, right? We're, if it's working, we're going to continue to work until we know it's completely clear out of the, um, out of the globe, per se, right? So we're repeating it. Um, so it's... It's, it's working, so, but those were the three steps that we took if we really um, look into it deeply. 
Um, let's uh, dive into the next slide. Pete, if you can help me put that right there. Okay, perfect. So um, the pandemic conditioned us to take corresponding actions. And again, that's what I just stated earlier. Um, there was really no gray area. It's black and white. Either you have a mask or you don't. Your hands are clean or it's not, right? There's no um, gray area. Uh, one of the things that I noticed based on my observation was one of the drivers for this whole thing was metrics, right? So uh, the decisions were based on number of active cases, number of infections, number of variants. Um, it was truly a data-driven uh, pandemic for the books, right? The more data that we had, the more we were able to make that informed decision. Um, and that's pretty much like how everyone operated. Um, so with that being said, um, next slide, please. Or actually, let's go back. I'm sorry, I jumped the gun. So this is the sync part that I was telling. I'm not good with the sync as of yet. Okay, so, so we know that metrics played a role. So if we think that the measurements played a key role, here's my question based on when I was working on this. Um, if the overall number of pandemic made people make decisions for their, for their let's say, for their processes, businesses, church, is there something uh, more relatable and tangible in terms of measuring our cells? Um, this can be a broad statement um, in terms of how do we measure our cells. Um, so let's, like, let's, let's look at a significantly smaller sample size to see what I'm trying to say. Um, and again, this is, this is so that we can kind of measure our metrics for the week, if you would, a small sample size to see how we're following the Lord, right? Because that's, that's what we're trying to chase. How are we doing better in terms of our walk with the Lord? So let's make it simpler by taking some things out that don't count, okay? So Pete, if you can help me, please. So the automated uh, verse of the day doesn't count. That's self-service. That's coming to your phone. That's coming to your device. That doesn't count. Uh, the preset radio channels on your car does not count. Even if it's HD, it does not count because that's self-service, right? Somebody's singing, somebody put the effort. Um, and then uh, going to church, you know, your typical Sunday consumerism also doesn't count. It has to be your own effort in coming up, whatever that means, right? And since I'm new to Oklahoma, this one, you, you guys will find it, uh, you guys will find this a little relational. Pete, can you help me? So going to this store and getting a new Bible also doesn't count. Um, because it's an Oklahoma thing, right? You think about Christian materials, you go here. So this one also does not count. Um, so what I'm saying is measurements in terms of anything that's uh, non-passive, right? Because when you're here, you're listening to the sermons, it's a very passive activity, right? Pastor Uncle's put all the effort, he's putting it all together, um, and we're just listening. But if we, if we don't take the time to reflect it, then by Monday morning, about 10 a.m., and if you are in your staff meeting, it's out the door. Um, you know, because you really haven't taken the chance to pause and reflect on it, right? Um, so as we're measuring, um, the, as I said, the small sample size was a weekly sample size. Your target value should be from a week ago. So every week you're just trying to see how you were the week before. Um, the, the, the analysis of this weekly assessment of how you spent the time with the Lord is more for um, just to determine has it gotten better over the week, has it gotten worse, or are we in a standstill position, if you would, as you're gauging this? Um, I believe measurement is the quickest way to determine a starting point because it becomes too, too big if you really wanted to kind of work on this. So I think just by honing into a week and just measuring what are some of the different things you're doing, and specifically with your you know, spiritual life, you can hone in to the, the amount of times that you had actually put effort in a uh, non-passive manner, because that's what counts. Um, so that, that was just a use case. Um, so let's see. Uh, in addition, um, with the pandemic as an excuse, if you would, um, we, we found a way to yes, right? We found a way to go to our grocery store. Some even found a way to get on a plane and go wherever they needed to. We found a way to yes, uh, because it was important that we still continue. So if it is important, I'm sure we'll find a way, right? So this pandemic proved that one more time, that we can get creative if we are given obstacles. So that's where it kind of goes back to that resilience. Um, so again, if it's, it, it's possible, if we believe it's important enough. Uh, next slide, please. So again, going back to the scripture, um, I'm not going to read it, but you can see it right here. 
um, one of the things that we can all relate to is that um, the, the trials and temptations, as the scripture says, um, you know, they usually have the same patterns and the themes, right? Um, when we are going to go in midst of some of those things, right? They all have uh, uh, the, uh, the similar pattern and themes. Um, what I believe based on my, uh, you know, observation and my whole analysis of this, in order to maximize resilience, you have to have a written plan identifying a few pathways to navigate the, the what's ahead of the corner, if you would. So let me see if I can kind of tie that into an example um, that I'm going to use. And it's, it's, a, it's an example that never gets old. I'm sure it's part of the New Year resolution for some people, slash um, we can constantly improve in this one area. So, so let's say the objective is to spend more time with the Lord, right? Um, spiritual advancement, if you would. So a pathway is a way, like how do you get there? So... So reading the Word of God, right? You just open your Bible and you read the Word of God. Meditating on the Word of God, right? That's another thing. That's an a action step. Um, thirdly, spending times on your knees, personal personal prayer in your closets or wherever that is, your own quiet time. So let's um, uh, jump over to the next slide, Pete. Okay, so what I, what I said earlier is you have to identify the multiple pathways that you are getting to that goal. So bring that up in like in a little writing form, again, we're trying to go away from the passive um, to the non-passive side of things, right? So you have to apply what is it that you're trying to do. So what I'm saying is consider the potential barriers um, to the, uh, uh, so, and the solutions. So if reading the Word of God is one of your pathway, that that's what I'm going to do to advance, then not having a plan to read a Bible, not being intentional about it, um, can derail. So you already know that's not going to work. Um, having a smart device to read the Bible, it's not going to work because you're going to constantly get bugged by a notification that's going to keep coming. So, so you get an idea. Like you have to be intentional and you really have to go back to that book, right? That's not going to distract you. Next up, uh, uh, med uh, meditating on the Word of God. So just reading blindly, again, as I said, it's a very passive activity if you're really not paying attention to what you're reading, right? Um, so instead of the potential barrier that would be, uh, there would be turning it into, let's say, um, um, a, a moment where you're just reading and you're not realizing what you're reading and you don't have the time to pause how to kind of put that together for your purposes. So you identify the potential barrier. So your cue is that you need to see what is it that you can do with that, what you're reading. Uh, pathway three, again, spending uh, time on needs. And this is your personal time of prayer. So the barriers are not planning, or being in an active mindset to pray, one, for sure. But oftentimes the barriers are you can't count the family prayer as your prayer. That doesn't work. This has to be your personal prayer with the Lord. Um, prayers of parents, grandparents, pastors, and elders also does not count. This is truly you, your, your activity in terms of how you're advancing and moving forward. So... Um, what I'm saying is the, the pandemic showed how we were resilient, and we came up with a lot of creative ways, right? Um, so just for instance, just for humor, um, uh, you know, I used to go, I used to get a haircut, but now I do it by myself, um, and now I really don't worry about it. Um, and that's just an example. Um, everybody just got creative with what was given to them. So what I'm saying is we've kind of built a momentum in this past season of getting creative, We've introduced new habits, new cues are generated in terms of we don't touch the, the knobs, we're careful about public places. All of these things are new, so we're in that mindset. Um, Pete, if you can draw over to the next slide, please. So my hope is that we're going to materialize on all of these new habits that we have created, um, that we will go ahead and build on all the habits that we build during resilience, um, and we'll see if we can go ahead and stick that into our moving forward, if you would, and see if it would grow over the course of time, right? Because that's where we're looking at. Where is it going to go over the course of time as opposed to a small sample size right now? Let's not get worked up with the small sample size right now, but knowing that over the course of time, little by little, all those habits added up. Um, if nothing else, I mean, now we know how to stay safe from COVID-19, right? So we're going to continue to wash our hands for the rest of our life. So we know that that's guaranteed. So these are some of those things that I've noticed that you know this pandemic has brought over to us. So again, the the, the trick is to uh, trick your brain literally to make meaningful adjustments to advance the spiritual life. Um, lastly, as I reminded myself, Pete, you can jump over to the last one. Knowledge, all this knowledge and all your personal time um, and just radio stations, whatever that is, whatever works for you, getting all of that 
is in itself is powerless. Um, it has the potential, um, but it will only become powerful when we apply and use it, um, i.e. Uh, shelf help versus self-help. Um, so that's the whole premise of my message. Um, I think this would be a cue for the worship team. So I think I landed this perfectly. I think so. Um, so I think they're stepping up here. I do want to pray here real quick, um, just, uh, just a way of wrapping it up. I'll let the worship team jump here. So again, these, these were things based on my observation. Um, I would like to go ahead and just, uh, just say a quick prayer um, based on uh, what I was able to do in terms of my uh, devotion time. Um, Lord, thank you for this beautiful day. Lord, we're very grateful for you. Thank you for, uh, thank you for being constant in our variables. We tend to change our mind a lot, but you just stay there with your mind. You already know things ahead. Um, I know that you have more to provide than, you know, saving us on the intersection of Oklahoma City when we're driving. You know, you're more, more than that. You're more than saving us from those intersections. You're, you're more than the provisions that you provide. You're more than the house that we have, the car that we have. Those are just things that you just freely provide, but I'm sure there's more to you. And so as we are here in this year, um, in the very beginning, quarter one, right, January, February, March, we're here, that we will continue to uh, spend time with you. There is really no other thing that we can add to what we need to to advance towards you by ad advance towards you, and it, the simple formula is we just have to take time to spend time with you. Period. Um, those preset radio stations and buying new things are really not going to work if we're not going to apply what is it that we're learning on a daily basis. So I hope that uh, we will continue to look to you, that we will we will do our effort in in disengaging from all those. Uh, passive activities and uh, you know getting into an activity that we are actually going to put some effort we hope that we will we will remember to do that anytime that we zone out that we will go back to the roots um, so I uh, uh, surrender all of this my thoughts and uh, I thank the church for giving me this opportunity um, uh, to speak here on this Sunday I surrender everything into your hands one more time in Jesus name we pray